Retired extension fruit specialist Kat Taylor used to say you need to be out walking and talking with your trees. And that's exactly true in the home orchard. Take a look at your trees, see what's going on, and understand the timing of their bud emergence so you'll know how to take care of them during the springtime. And take a look at this dwarf apple tree. We have some interesting things going on here. This has an interstem graft and if you've ever ordered a fully dwarf tree from a nursery you might not notice it when the tree is really young but it actually has three points where grafting has occurred. Down the soil line there's a first graft and there's a rootstock there that it imparts dwarfness and then there's a second graft right here where they've put in what we call an interstem to ensure additional dwarfness and then our final variety is right here on top and sometimes over time this tends to swell out or bulb out and you can end up with graft incompatibility in a few isolated cases so keep an eye on that inner stem. Also take a look at the bud stage of your apples. Now We've pretty well written off our peach crop out here in the studio gardens, but the apples still have an excellent chance of making this spring. These haven't quite opened up yet, but in another day or two, they'll be at what we call the pink stage, which is where the, the petals are just showing color, and then they'll begin, be beginning to open up. And we want to start paying attention to our temperatures in the garden, and one thing that we find is an invaluable tool in the home garden is a maximum minimum thermometer. This is just a thermometer that has an extra little piece in here of alcohol and it helps identify how hot and how cold it got in your garden. The greenhouse growers have used these for years to help them keep track of temperature pulses inside the greenhouse, but it's handy to put this in a shady place in the garden and you can read it every morning and it will tell you how cool it got. We can see right here that it got down to probably around 34 degrees last night. And then if you look over on this side, it tells us that we're up close to 80 degrees right now, so we're having some really wide temperature swings. The nice thing about this is you can just push this red bar in the center and that will bring these down to the level of the mercury so you can reset it each morning. It just causes that to glide right on down. So after you record your temperatures in the morning, you can just reset it for the next day. It's a really a handy tool. Now some other things that you need to be doing in the fruit orchard right now is getting your spray equipment ready. We always emphasize safety in the garden so far as pesticides go and you want to make sure that you have your equipment ready to go. You want to have gloves that are pesticide proof, be sure you have rubber boots, have a respirator and be sure to wear it when you're mixing pesticides. And we've shown this face shield before. This is very helpful, especially with spraying fruit trees, to prevent drift from getting back on the rest of your face that the respirator does not cover. And last of all, we have a coated Tyvek suit that is used and, and dedicated just for pesticide spraying and completely covers your clothing while you're spraying, and that's also very helpful. Just remember that the legs of it need to extend over the tops of your boots and not be tucked down inside. And then last of all, there's an insecticide that a lot of low spray apple orchardists are really recommending for commercial use when you're trying to cut out the impact of pesticide spraying, but also for home gardeners to use, and the name of it is Imidan, spelled I-M-I-D-A-N. And the benefit of using Imidan as an insecticide is that it has fairly low impact on beneficial insects. If you have to control pests such as plum curculio and codling moth, this is one that will control them effectively, but is not as hard on beneficial insects such as honeybees. Now, the two pests that we need to control right now, as I mentioned on apples, are plum curculio. That's the brown snout beetle or weevil that causes a crescent-shaped scar in fruit. And it's the one that deposits eggs in the fruit and induces premature drop of apples in the summertime. Codling moth is the one that deposits eggs and the worm tunnels all the way to the core. In both cases, if you'll spray an insecticide such as imidan, when 75% of the flower petals have fallen off the tree, and that's what we call petal fall, spray it then and then repeat it two weeks later, you'll take care of a high percentage of those insects and not have to do the 10, 15 or so sprays that a commercial orchardist would have. You may still have some insect damage, but you'll greatly reduce it with just those two sprays. Well, those are some tips that we hope you'll follow in the orchard. Try to stay ahead of these pests and have a good fruit season. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.